everybody. It's Dr. B back again. Um, as the, the title slide says, we're, we're talking about arithmetic and comparison instructions as well as if statements. Uh, for this video, I'm just going to look at the arithmetic instructions and then I'll split the rest of that off into a, a separate video. So make sure you watch that one for this week as well. Let's start by looking at unsigned addition. The, the main uh, instruction for unsigned addition is the ADC, the add with carry. At, at its simplest, it does an 8-bit unsigned addition where the uh, it sets the carry bit if, again, if the addition generates a carry. So remember the carry bit is part of the uh, program status register. Uh, one thing to note is that it adds the existing carry bit to the accumulator as well. So let's look at an example. This is 200 plus 60 uh, in unsigned edition. I've written it out here to the side how we would do it on paper. 200 becomes this bit pattern, 60 becomes this bit pattern, and when you add them together you actually get a result of 4 in 8 bits with a carry of 1. And so it does not it does not become 260 the result is, is 4 with a carry of 1. So just again to go back to what we talked about with, with uh, unsigned addition earlier in the semester. So here's what the code would look like. We load in an immediate of 200. We're going to clear the carry bit because we don't want a, carrier, a carry from a previous addition to affect this. And then we call uh, add with carry again here with just an immediate of 60. And let's look how that falls through. So I load in my immediate of 200, so now A contains 200. Uh, it's actually going to set the negative flag, but we don't care about that because we're, we're only looking at unsigned addition. The, it's going to set the zero flag. Obviously, it's not zero, so the zero flag becomes one. And it's going to leave C and V untouched, uh, but we'll, we'll see how, so we don't really care what's in those yet. We clear the carry bit, and as you can see, that's ensures that our carry bit starts at zero so that it doesn't pollute our result. Then we call ADC uh, add with carry with an immediate value of 60. The value in the A register will go to 4 and the C bit of the program status register will be set to 1. Now that C bit becomes useful when we want to add multi-byte integers. Add, uh, add C itself can only add eight bytes at a time, or eight bits at a time. Sorry, if we want more bits, in other words, more bytes, uh, we have to perform multiple add C's, and the purpose of the carry bit is to carry that carry out into the next edition. So here's my example. I have what 15,227,824 which would be this 3-byte integer in unsigned, plus 1,652,956, which in, again, in 3 bytes or 24 bits would be this value. We add them one byte at a time, starting with the, the lowest byte first. And as those bytes generate carry bits, we add those into the next uh, in with the next round of additions, and add carry will automatically look at the carry bit and add that in for us. So those will get added together, and it turns out that generates a carry. These two and the carry will be added together to generate this byte. It uh, generates a, a carry of zero, which still gets added in to the the high byte of all of these. And as it turns out, the whole thing will will generate a carry as well. So let's look at how that might happen in actual code. And this example assumes it's always a three byte uh, addition. So we have my, our 15 million and change. Let's assume it starts at address 1000. And because this is a, a 6502, which is a little Indian architecture, the lowest byte is stored first. So the lowest byte is stored at 1000, 
the next byte at 1001, and then the high byte at 1002. We're going to do this, something similar for our second operand, 1,652,956. We'll put its low byte at address 2000, its middle byte at 2001, and its high byte at 2002. We add those together, starting with the low byte, and we're going to store the result at low byte 4000, middle byte 4001, high byte 4002. And I'm doing all this for a reason that we'll see in a minute. So add what's at 1000 to 2000 and store it at 4000, add what's at 1001, add it to what's at 2001, store it to 4001, take what's at 1002, add it to 2002, and store it at 4002. The key is we're preserving the carry bits from each one so that they affect the next byte in the series. And this is what it would look like in code. We have three integers, uh, or three bytes to, to add together for, for our two integers. We start the process by clearing the carry. Then we add the lowest bytes together. So we load in at 1,000, we add what's in 2,000, we store to 4,000. Very straightforward. But note, that that's going to potentially generate a carry bit in the program status register. We're not going to clear that yet so that it carries on to the middle bytes here. So we load in what's at 1001, we add what's in 2001, and we store that to 4001. That addition will bring in the carry from the, the previous stage uh, if there is one. Finally, we'll add the high byte. Load in what's at 1002, add it to what's at 2002, and store it back to 4002. Again, it would include the carry from what happened previously. And that's how you do multi-byte uh, unsigned integers. Let's move on to unsigned. The uh, instruction here is SBC, subtract with borrow, which Borrow is related to the carry, which is why they use the C here. So when we have SBC, it subtracts its operand and the borrow from the accumulator. The weirdness here is the borrow is the inverse of the carry bit. So if the carry is set to 0, then we have a borrow of 1. If the carry is set to 1, we have a borrow of 0. Now that sounds backwards but I'll show you in a minute why they did it that way. It was, you know, a way of, in, in, when 6502 came around, it was probably a way of saving hardware, uh, but that uh, it works, while, as we'll see in a minute. So here's my example, uh, 200 minus 60 this time, and we're doing this in unsigned uh, math. There's 200, there's 60, we subtract, we get 140, because 140 does fit into 8 bits. Um, my first instruction, I load 200 into my accumulator, so now the accumulator has 200 in it. Uh, again, it sets the N and Z flags, but we don't care, care about that yet. Um, it doesn't do anything to the carry so, or the overflow, so we just don't know what's in them right now. We're going to set the carry, SEC, so that my carry starts out at 1, meaning I have a borrow of 0. So I'm not borrowing anything to subtract out right now. Then I do my subtract with carry or subtract with borrow from 200, and that gives me, um, actually it gives me 140 in that register. That's what I get from copy pasting from an earlier slide. So my result in the A register is 140 here. Um, and note that the carry flag is, remains at one. Because it remains at one, that means a borrow was not generated for this. So what? Again, this similar to how we did this with multi-byte addition, this becomes important for multi-byte subtraction. Same numbers from the earlier example, 15 million and change minus 1.6 million and some change. We subtract the low byte first, 
and it potentially borrows from the middle byte, which just subtracts, which potentially borrows from the upper byte, though. In this case, we don't borrow on the upper byte, uh, we do there, but as we'll see. But each subtraction can potentially borrow or subtract something out of the, the next byte up. So let's set that up in some code. Actually, before we do code, let's look at the example a little more in depth. Um, we do this one byte at a time, starting with the lowest byte. So we do, uh, that's, this is what it will look like. Take those bits, subtract out that bit, and get this result. The way the hardware will do it is it will start by inverting what we're subtracting. Add those two things together and add one. Or sorry, add the carry bit. So we always start by setting the carry bit to one. So the first byte will always be the first operand, the inverse of the second operand, plus one, because we start by setting the carry to one. Add those two things together, and as we see, oops, touchy mouse pad. There we go. As we see, it generated a carry of zero. But, because, but that will translate into a borrow of 1. So go into the next slide. Once again, we take the to subtract, we actually take the first operand, add it to the inverse of the second operand, plus the carry. We do that, we get this result generates a carry of 1. That means no borrow was generated. And then we move to the final byte, our highest byte. To subtract, we take one operand, the first operand, add the inverse of the second operand to it. So those are the inverses there. And then add in the carry, since there was, um, wait, did I get that right? Yeah. So this actually should be no borrow generated. There we go. We add in the carry of one from the previous slide, which means there was no borrow generated. And this is the result we get. And we even get a carry out of one here. But remember, a carry out of one from our final result means we did not generate a borrow. And in this case, since we're subtracting, that means the, um, the, the overall result we get, the overall 24-bit result, actually fit within our 24 bits. So we did not get this wraparound effect that we would have gotten if our carry bit had been zero for subtraction. Now let's look at that, this in code. Uh, same data layout we had for the addition. I'm using the same numbers. Uh, our first operand starts with its low byte at 1000. Second operand starts with its low byte at 2000. And we're going to store uh, the low byte of the result starting at 4000 and middle byte and upper byte and so forth. Again, little Indian, so our low bytes are always uh, at the lowest addresses. And here's what the code will look like. Uh, we'll start by setting our carry to 1 with the SEC instruction. Subtract the lowest byte. Load in the low byte from the accumulator. Subtract what's in uh, address 2000. And as we saw before, this one will actually generate a borrow, a carry out of zero. And then we store all that to 4000. For the middle byte, uh, load what's in 1001. Subtract from it what's in 2001. Note it will not generate a borrow, and it will actually include the it'll include the borrow from the previous um, the the, pre, the previous stage. Store that to 4001. Then finally subtract the high byte of excuse me 1002. Subtract 2002 from it. Um, pulls in the carry from the previous stage. Uh, which is, again, inverse of a borrow, and stores that to 4002. So subtraction is the weird one here. It can be hard to, to remember that we have to set 
the carry to one to begin with, and then the rest of it will cascade um, properly when we go through multiple bytes uh, of subtraction. So last word for here, signed addition and subtraction. In this, it works exactly the same as unsigned uh, addition and subtraction. Even when we look at multi-byte uh, addition and subtraction. The only difference, like when it was single byte uh, addition and subtraction, is how we interpret the result. The most significant bit is the sign. So if we have a multi-byte result, we look at that high byte and its most significant bit. If that most significant bit is one, our signed result is, is negative. If the uppermost bit is, is zero, our signed result is positive. It's, it remains in two's complement representation. And um, just like addition and subtraction uh, in a single byte, it will set the overflow bit um, in, if, in the case of an overflow. So uh, with that, we uh, go look at the homework and, and, the and other, other readings and things that I've given you. And then we'll talk about this a little more in class uh, when I see you. Thank you.